Hey everyone, welcome back to University of Winnipeg Chemistry. This is Dr. Carroll here, and we are looking at our third lecture in Chapter 12, right in the middle of the relationship between free energy at non-standard conditions versus free energy at standard conditions. I would have bundled this into the second lecture, but my pen broke, so I have revived it. And here's the equation on page 579, right at the bottom. Delta G of reaction is delta G naught plus RT ln of Q, where Q has the instantaneous concentrations plugged in to a mass action expression, uh, something you remember from last year, something we're going to revisit and expand upon when we get into our equilibrium chapter. If uh, Q is 1, then everything is at standard value, so 1 bar and 1 molar, and the natural log of 1 is 0, and then delta G would equal delta G naught. But if we have non-standard concentrations and molarities and or uh, pressures and bars, we can force something that may be non-spontaneous into something that is spontaneous, or, <coughs> excuse me, something that is spontaneous into something that is not. Um, so if we look here, product concentrations appear in the numerator, so when we have more product, delta G becomes less negative, because it's delta G is delta G naught plus RT ln of Q, so Q gets bigger, and uh, then the delta G naught, uh, if it was negative, well, it would become less negative. So reaction becomes less spontaneous as product concentration increases if you start with a reaction that is spontaneous. And then you have the converse as well. A reaction becomes more spontaneous as the reactant concentration increases if, again, if it starts off as being spontaneous. Where do the units go? Hmm. That we'll talk about a little later, but uh, the equation will give the correct results even if Q is not dimensionless. Okay, so um, let's jump straight to an example of how this works. Example 12.8, we look at this example reaction a few times. So N2O4 goes to 2NO2. Find the minimum partial pressure at which the reaction is spontaneous. If the partial pressure of NO2 is 1 bar and the temperature is 298 Kelvin. So we have delta G is delta G naught plus RT ln of Q. So it's delta G naught plus RT ln. And so this is the partial pressure of NO2. I'm going to put a little I here for initial over the partial pressure of N2O4 initial. So it's the initial concentrations. I'm perturbed that the book doesn't use that same kind of notation, but there you have it. Um, so we have already got the standard free energy at 298 Kelvin, which is 2.8 kilojoules. So this is 2.8. What is, sorry, the delta G naught is 2.8. R is 8.314. The temperature is 298. Um, we want to just make it spontaneous. So we'll set delta G to zero. So we want to solve for the pressure. Okay, so here we go. Zero is delta G naught plus RT ln of one bar over the pressure of N2O4, right? Because the question asked for uh, on the minimum pressure, partial pressure of N2O4 at which the reaction is spontaneous if NO2 is one bar. So let's see. Minus delta G naught over RT is the ln of one over partial pressure of N2O4. So delta G naught, 2.8 by 10 to the 3. Now I'm going to make it into joules because my R is joules per mole per Kelvin. And I get minus 1.13. So then take the inverse natural log of both sides. So 1 over the partial pressure of N2O4 is E raised to the minus 1.13 power, which is 0.323. Rearrange, and you get 3.1 bar. So... As long as the partial pressure of N2O4 is greater than 3.1 bar, it will be a spontaneous process. Okay, I'm not changing the temperature, 
but if I have a concentration of N2O4 more than 3.1 bar, now, I said concentration, didn't I? I guess I really mean partial pressure, but it's just more stuff. If I got more stuff of the N2O4, then those collisions are going to drive the reaction into the spontaneous world, okay? It's not like some magical switch. It does happen gradually, but when delta G not, sorry, when delta G is less than zero, then the, that works. I don't know why they say delta G not. They really mean delta G. Let's get rid of that not there. Okay. Um, so using standard conditions, if both pressures were one bar, the reaction is not spontaneous. To force the reaction to go, we need more reactants. So reactant pressure that is greater than one bar makes sense. Um, this one here, find the maximum partial pressure of NO2 at which the reaction is spontaneous. The partial pressure of N2O4 is one bar and temperature is 298 Kelvin. So I'm going to set again the zero equals. And so my I'm just looking at the textbook straight here. Delta G naught is 2800. Uh, delta G is delta G naught plus RT 8.314. Times 298 times the natural log of Q. So Q and 204, assuming the same reaction, N204 goes to 2 NO2. So the partial pressure of NO2 is what I want to find. The partial pressure of N204 is 1. So I'll put that 1 there. Then I got the partial pressure of NO2 squared. So the partial pressure of NO2 is going to equal, let's see, I'm going to take 2800. Um, the other side, take it to the other side. So I get 2800 negative divided by 8.314 times 298. And then I'm going to take the inverse natural log of that. And that gives me the square of the partial pressure of NO2. So I take the square root and I get 0.57, which is correct. So 0.57 bar. Now let's talk for a second about maximum versus minimum. So, we're saying if the partial pressure of NO2 is 0.57 bar, this is going to be spontaneous. Okay, so are you saying if I got more than 0.57 bar, then it's going to become non-spontaneous? I guess that's what we're saying. Let's 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 just say the PNO2 was two bar, right? So that'll be four natural log of four uh, times two ninety eight times eight point three one four plus twenty eight hundred is a big number uh, and a big positive number. So if I did less, let's say I did 0. 0.5 on the nose, so 0. 0.5 squared, 0.5 bar, take the natural log of that, times 8.314 times 298, and add that to 2800, and I still have a negative number. Okay, so it does make sense. So when you do maximum and minimum, it's good then to just guess a few values less and more than what your calculated value is to see that it all uh, fits in. The example shows that a reaction with a small positive delta G naught can be made spontaneous by relatively small changes in concentrations. Okay, and we got this natural log term. That's pretty powerful stuff right there. Um, if neither temperature nor concentration are at standard values, free energy calculations must first be done uh, using equation 1211 to get the delta G naught. And then, once you get the delta G naught at a temperature, then get delta G for that temperature. Okay, so we can influence spontaneity by playing around with temperature, by playing around with non-standard versus, versus standard conditions. Okay, um... Changing the temperature of the system is another way. We talked about that. In fact, we've talked about this before. I jumped ahead 
and uh, looked at the values. Some books have these different cases, and uh, the book is very wordy here. I'm not going to get into all that. You can read it if you want. Here's the table, which I gave before. So table 12, 3. So if delta H naught is negative and delta S naught is positive, you will be spontaneous at all temperatures. That's the one when you're sliding down a ski slope. Then we have if the reverse, like climbing back up the ski slope, well, that's going to take lots of work, right? That's going to be a non-spontaneous process, right? So at any temperature, it will not be spontaneous. Then you have the cases where delta H and delta S both change in the same direction. So delta H positive, delta S positive. So that will be entropy driven at high temperature. And uh, so at high temperature, you'll get a negative value for delta G naught. And if they're both negative at low temperature, you'll get a negative value for delta G naught. Okay. Um, And you can try, uh, I would try 12.4.3 on your own there. Some applications of thermodynamics. Uh, this we really skirt over. Don't really even talk about it much, if at all. So I'm not going to worry about the nitrogen fixation example. Um, just going to zoom right through here. And... Uh, now, I'm going to leave out this next part. The clausius clapeyron equation, some years we talk about it, other years we don't. And to be honest right now, at the time of this screencast, I am guessing we will not discuss it this year. If we do, uh, I will go back and do that calculation. But for now, I'm going to leave that out. And uh, you should be jumping for joy at that bit of information. Um, and yeah, there's all this stuff about the clauses clap here on, but usually we leave it out because we've got so much other things to do. So then, uh, thermal pollution, that's for you to read on your own. It's just pollution. Okay. Bioenergetics. Now that we talk about a tiny bit here, um, what's interesting is this, you can have a coupled reaction. So I'm just jumping straight to here. What that means is you can have two processes that uh, combine to by working together make something spontaneous that otherwise wouldn't be so i know i've jumped through a lot because we don't do everything in this chapter but here i got uh in the world of biochemistry not my forte but anyways we got glutamic acid plus nh3 goes to glutamine plus h2o and Delta G naught here is positive, so that's non-spontaneous. But then we got our friends ATP, what the heck is that? Adenosine triphosphate plus water goes to adenosine diphosphate plus phosphoric acid. And that delta G naught value is negative. So if you combine those together, uh, let's see, the H2O is an intermediate. It's going to cancel out. So I got glutamic acid plus ATP plus NH3 goes to glutamine plus ADP plus H3PO4. And what you do, just like what you did with uh, the um, Hess's law way back when, is you just add the two values of delta G naught. And if you add those values, you get uh, minus 17 kilojoules. So you have made a process coupled, joined together two processes into one, and in so doing, have made something spontaneous that otherwise wouldn't be. So for a spontaneous reaction to drive one that is non-spontaneous, the two sets of reactants must interact chemically, and you get what's called a coupled biochemical reaction. And then there's some other fancy stuff associated with that. But again, the idea is you're adding two uh, reactions together to get a uh, new reaction, and you just hope that it becomes spontaneous. Okay, so uh, that is it for chapter 12. Lots of new concepts here and uh, lots of practice questions at the end of the chapter and in our good friend Wiley Plus. We will go 
into a totally different direction in our next lecture because we will start as I flip through we're gonna it's go, we're gonna raise the roof here because we are going to go nuclear not nuclear as Homer Simpson says but nuclear so we're gonna go into chapter 21 page 1020 and we're going to talk a bit about chemical kinetics and how that is related fun stuff see you later